Hey, Chris Lipe here with The Recording Revolution. You got projects where you're producing a vocalist or an instrumentalist, and maybe they happen to be in a different room, or maybe in the same room but behind you, and you need to rig a talkback setup, but your rig, your interface, your monitoring system doesn't have a good built-in talkback solution. I'm going to show you a really slick way that I picked up from a good friend in Nashville, Dan Frizzell, who used to run Legends Studios, a really cool way within your DAW to leverage super simple plugins and routing to create the ultimate talkback experience. And this is great for multi-room setups, but it's even really nice if you're just in the same room with someone and you want to be able to get into their headphones and have a, a better conversation with them. So let me show you how to set this up. Before I forget, if you want to go deeper with your general recording techniques, I have a free course and you can find that free course by clicking the link below and I'll help you get started with your recording process right. We work through a real mini song and you get to learn how to track all sorts of things, vocals, guitars, bass. It's really cool. So click that link below and join that free course. All right, so I've got my mic routed directly into the DAW, into my session. Here's, here's this session that we're working on. Kind of a cool, cool song. Now, if you notice, I'll show you the effects of this. If I keep talking, 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 and then I hit play, la 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 la. No, no, you can't be blaming. The the talkback mic goes off. It's super awesome. So you never you never have an instance where I'm talking over the recording. Uh, or I'm talking over the recording process or the playback process. Here's how I do it. Uh, standard audio track, uh, the mic that I'm talking into is routed into that, uh, coming in on analog four. And I have this going out separate outs, but this is really just so you guys can hear it for, for the video recording. This can be, go through your main outs as well because it mutes your speakers like I just demonstrated. Super awesome. So you're never going to have that problem where you have your speakers going and the talk back and it minimizes feedback and everything. It's really great. Okay, here's how it's working though. I've got a simple compressor set to duck and key off of this tone track. I generated a tone by uh, just doing a, a signal generator plugin or you could really record anything that's super consistent. But here, here we go. There's my tone. Yuck. I'm going to, I already have it recorded here, but I'll show you how to do it anyway. Uh, rather than it being routed to my main out, uh, I'm going to route it to bus 19. And I'm going to hit record enable on, on here. And I'll go ahead and mute it just for a minute. And I'll go ahead and record this tone into the track. And, you know, it's a little bit lower than this one, but that's okay. I was just showing you how to do the routing. Once I have this uh, recorded onto this track, in other words, I've printed it, and I could even bring this one up just, just for fun. It doesn't really matter how it sounds. It just matters that it's good and consistent. I can go ahead and delete this AUGS track. Don't need it at all. So I got my tone, and... I have this set to bus 19, which I could then set it to nothing. It doesn't matter. What matters is my output. Then I'm going to load any basic uh, compressor plugin that allows you to key off of another track. So I have the output of my tone track, which is the super consistent audio, and I have the compressor keyed to the uh, output of the tone track. This means that even if there's no thing, no program material going on uh, in my 
in my song that when I hit play, the, the tone track is going to bring the compressor in because of the key. So if I'm out here, you can see here there's, there's no audio. The song is over. But when I hit play on the DAW, even outside the normal song where there's no other program material, watch what happens. La, 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 la. This tone triggered the activation of my compressor. I'm using the compressor as a ducker. So when I'm playing or recording something inside the DAW, the mic is not on. I don't have to, in this method, I don't have to worry about, uh, oh, is my talk back engaged? Is it not engaged? Why can't they hear me? It just automatically defaults and you can route it to their headphones however you want. Um, so just to demonstrate again here, and I'll show you how I have the compressor set up here in a minute, because that's key. Um, we're going to play part of the song here. I'm going to talk, 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 talk. Oh, your own, no, no. You can't be blaming everybody when you did this alone. And then as soon as we're done playing, my mic becomes active again. So here's how we have this set up here. We have a very, very uh, down threshold. We want to make sure that the threshold is clearing the, the tone uh, output. So it probably doesn't need to be that low. But the important thing here is that we have a negative ratio. And you can see that it crosses, crosses the threshold so much that it goes, it goes down. So it, it basically makes my mic, I mean, not completely zero, but very zero when I, when I go. And, you wanna be free. and no amount of shouting um, or loudness coming from the speakers or anything. La 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 la. You can see it just it doesn't doesn't happen. Then we can actually adjust the attack and release so that we have a nice uh, return to audibility, which is super cool too. I have the release set a little bit slower, so you can see after I stop the the uh, recording. Hey, 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 you can see it. It doesn't just go right up. So if I made this release really short, one, 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 you get a little bit of a little bit of a pop. But if, and if I make it really long, you can see it takes too long. So find a balance. I found that around, uh, you know, just over 100 milliseconds created a nice uh, smooth re-entry for it. So essentially what we've done is we've set up a tone track, something that can be super consistent. You need to do that rather than just keying it off um, a track in the rest of the, the recording because you may not have the rest of the recording. You may need a talkback setup that goes on and off when you're laying down your very first tracks. That's why you need that tone and you need to key it off a tone instead of some other thing in your, in your DAW. But we're using a very simple compressor, and we're using it in a ducking sort of way, and we're using its key function. Like I said, this is a you know, just a C1 compressor by Waves, very common compressor, not expensive at all, uh, and other the, the, lots of built-in compressors have the ability to key off of another track as well. I have used this method so often in my multi-room setup for sure, but I've also used it in times where I'm recording in a uh, like a basement or something and I can't see the other people you know because they're in a different room and I don't have fancy windows or whatever and <laughs> so it's really handy especially when you can't see people to have this auto talkback thing that you just don't have to think about because you don't know when they're paying attention or when they need to say something or when you need to say something because you don't have that visual contact. So it's especially useful there. I hope you're able to implement this and that it works well for your workflow in your recording sessions. And again, if you'd like more help with your own recordings and your process, click that link below and join my free recording course. We'll see you for more.